district. Today is December the 18th. Um, let's all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Secretary, please call the roll. Commissioner Benjamin. Here. Commissioner Rivers. Here. Commissioner Way. Here. Commissioner Brown. Here. Commissioner Flowers. Here. Okay. At this time, I'd like to call for the Secretary Treasurer's report. As of November 30th, and the city police law enforcement overtime, nothing's changed to date um, when the new year started in October. So we've spent $1,120 of the St. John's County Sheriff's Department overtime of the 20,000 budgeted. We've spent 820. Um, the derelict boats was 9,031. The marine electronics we agreed to, we spent the 12,335. Um, basically, it hasn't really changed from the prior month. For the State Board of Administration, what's in that account is 22380 In the operating account, we've been getting in our taxes, our tax revenue, so there's about $330,000 and uh, 330000 is what um, is in the operating account. I'm possibly going to move money over probably a hundred to hundred and fifty thousand over to the money market account so we can get some interest if it's not needed and if it's needed for any kind of dredging projects we can put it back in um, in the money market account there's one million six I did have to take two hundred thousand out of there because we had to pay for the I think it was the connectivity that we didn't have the money in at the time because um, the new tax the new year just started in October. So actually what I'm going to try to do is put that back. Um, the, the Summer Haven account balance, I just paid Turnbull 60 some odd thousand dollars, 60 plus. So the Summer Haven account balance has 204,476. They have not we have not gotten any money from the state yet, but Mike, we're going to do we need to fill anything out for them to start reimbursing us? Yes, I can do that this week. Oh, good. Okay. And then I reimburse the Summer Haven. The, of the taxes budgeted, we our tax revenue for the year should be $526,000. we have received $182,000 to date, and we're expected to get another $344,000. That comes in. Right. Tax bills. Okay. Any questions with regard to the treasurer's report? Okay. All right. Approval of the minutes of the regular meeting on November 20th, 2018. Any corrections or additions to the minutes? Yes, sir. Okay. Go ahead. Um, a few places there are some incorrections and some leaving outs. Okay. Do you want me to tell you them? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Page four. Second paragraph down, Commissioner Flowers asked why this is addressing Teddy Meyer from St. John's County. Commissioner Flowers asked why was asking for excuse me. Commissioner Flowers asked why he was asking for seventy thousand now when two months ago they requested thirty. Uh, Mr. Meyer's answer to that question was, I cannot answer that question. But here you have a whole other answer that may have been implied throughout conversation, but that's not what he said to me. Now, what do you say in the, the minutes? His answer it? was, I cannot answer your question. Right. So the minutes are incorrect because you said that his answer was, he said they have since found they'll be losing TDC funding, etc. That's not what he said to, in response to my question. Well, he's here. Maybe he can tell us what his response well, I, was. Well, I understand. We'll ask him that, but I thought we were approving the minutes, and that's an incorrect. That's incorrect. I could listen to it, and I'll get back. I wish you would. Okay. Okay. All right, let's we go, if we go down here, next paragraph, she, assuming Mrs. Flowers, 
asked why the county is not building boat ramps in other places, and Mr. Meyer said land is too expensive to build new boat ramps. That was only part of the answer. Mr. Blow commented that it was too long and too hard to get the permits, etc., for the um, yeah, that's in there in a different place. May Street place that I um, which by the way I've got something we'll need to to that go back to. That. In there. Okay, but you know these are minutes of the meeting. Paraphrasing is one thing, but that's not what he answered to my question. And you guys uh, about Mr. Meyer. That's what it says here. Mr. White Meyer said land is too expensive to build ramps. That's not all that was said, certainly. He did say that though. He did say that. He did say he didn't want to spend a million dollars on land. Well, I understood him to say that uh, when you asked, he couldn't think of it, but the more he talked, the more the reasons came out for why they're not doing that. And that's what I put in there. No, that was something different. You're talking about some two different things. The question was how we went from 30 to 70. He never was able to answer that. That's not what came out later. Well, we'll this listen, is the we'll, boat building boat ramps we're talking we'll, we'll about. We'll listen to it, and if All there's right. a problem with it, I'll correct it. Okay. Um, at the very end, when Commissioner uh, Chairman Benjamin says here said the records, or we were talking about the pump out boat fiasco of twenty-one thousand dollars for less than six boats being pumped out. Um, Commissioner Benjamin said the records are so old they are irrelevant to current district business. That's not what he said at that point in the meeting. He beat the hammer down and stopped me in the middle of my sentence from talking about it any longer. And he said, I don't want to talk about it anymore. So if you're going to do the meetings, I, I mean the minutes and paraphrase them, they need to be the right thing that was said at the right time. That's all. Well, I don't think that's... Yes, all happened. you've got to do, if you've recorded it on the audio, right here. speaking of which, it would be really nice for, I think, the public if they could see this whole thing on the Internet. The city does that. You hold meetings at 3 no, we're not required. Mm -hmm. I know you're not required to do it, and I'm not sure why I'm asking the secretary this. Why are you answering that question? It has nothing to do with being required. I said it would be nice if the public could watch these meetings because they're held in the middle of the workday at 3 in the afternoon. And all you got to do is put up a camera, record them, and we can post them to the website. Are you, who are you directing your comment to? Well, I'm just, I was talking to you, Mr. Legal Counsel. Betzel. Mr. Betzel. Uh, well, if we need to do, perhaps I need to question? make a motion. Should I need make a motion to for us to be able to do that for the public? Um, yeah, I guess you could do that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Should I do that now or later? Make the motion. Meeting? Yeah. I'd like to make a motion, please, that we record the meetings, uh, not just audio but video, so that the public could watch it on the website. Can we modify that motion to just move to figure out how much that's going to cost the board? Because if it's going to, I will cost do it for free. I will do it for free. I think we're probably going to have to have a contractor come in to do that, though, right? Um, there are very, very few laws in our charter, but we do need to follow those laws. But apparently the board, as far as I can read, can make a lot of the rules that they want to. So, I think I'd, I'd like to open that up for discussion. Um, okay. You know, before we make a motion, the, uh, you know, just to, to record it, you need record. I don't know if there's recording facilities here or cameras and everything that you can do it with. and. Well, is it recorded oh, it already? Takes is a telephone. No, just on the tape recorder is all we have. You're yeah. talking about a video recording? What's a video? Like, yeah, the, like city the city commission, commission meetings and yeah. people you can... Oh, if the public... Again, three o'clock in the afternoon, most of the it's public has their nose to the grindstone this time of day and are working to pay those taxes and, you know, to ask them to take a vacation or sick day to come sit in the meeting. You know, when we could... Again, it would cost us nothing. All it takes is a cell phone. I'm not sure why we'd need a contract uh, for... Okay, your motion's on the floor. No. Why are we talking about the minutes? Yeah, we're talking about minutes. Yeah, we're we're new business. We're talking about... Uh, uh, should I bring in the motion now or later? Well, I think the chairman told you later. No, he didn't. He, he did not. I didn't open up for discussion, but you're, you're right. I think this is... Mr. Something. Chairman, I move approval of the minutes. Let's you move to finished. approve the minutes even though I'm telling you they're incorrect? Okay. She's not, I don't think she's going Did you have any more corrections? No, that was all, but they were very serious things. Okay, okay well, I'll, I'll move approval of the minutes as corrected. Uh, I'll second the motion. And then, uh, Mr. Bed, so I guess you'll look into the tape and see exactly what yeah, has we'll, to be changed. Yeah, we'll put what's on the no tape. No problem. Okay, great. Okay. And we'll discuss the, uh, the 
you're videotaping. Okay. You need to yeah. vote on the minutes. Yeah. All in favor of the minutes? Aye. 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 No abstain. No. Okay. So you got three and two yeah. abstentions. Okay. Okay. Motion passed. Okay. Let's see. Engineering report. Well, before you do that, engineering report, I want to ask you a couple things. The, um, I guess let me hear your report first. I had some questions with regard to Turnbull and, and um, keeping uh, the friends up to date on everything, see if there's any changes, because it looks like that nothing's been going on since July. No, it's, it's been slow going. They've, um, bef during November, they mobilized uh, the pipeline. They were installing and fusing the pipeline. Uh, they, they have a dredge on site now. Um, I understand last week they had some uh, mechan mechanical issues with the dredge uh, during the, the high tides that we had, um, caused some damages. So I was down there yesterday, dredge, dredge is on site, the, the pipeline is set up. They have excava excavated a few thousand cubic yards with their um, land-based excavator on the uh, east side of the <coughs> river. So th there is some activity ongoing, it's just uh, been a little slow going. Anything going on with the lease turns? Now their nesting season is over with. We we have had to um, coordinate with FWC regarding construction of the lease turn habitat at the beach placement site because our permit required us to, to build three acres right. seaward of the dune, but because of erosion, we haven't been able to, to keep that sand there. So we've been working with FWC to to modify the permit to build that three acres west of the current dune. So, you know, between the river and the currently vegetated dune crest. So that, that's what we've been trying to do, the, the coordination we've been going through these last couple of months with FWC for, for, for the, the, uh, the lease turns. Okay. The MSA 233 um, mitigation site, according to the permit, we still do have to um, do some work out there during summer of 2019. But then the permit requirements are all through after next summer. Okay. Have we run any budget problems yet? No, not with the, the current budget. We still have the, you know, we're, we're working with the 400000 from the state and right. the uh, 352000 from uh, the, the county reimbursement. So we're, um, we have money set aside for the work that we have to do next summer, and we're, we have Turnbull under contract to spend a certain amount, and we still have maybe 20000 unallocated as a little cushion in case some, some stuff does go wrong. So our, our budget, budget is looking good right now. Okay. It's, just, it's real important to keep the friends up to date on all this, too. Okay. Okay. Anything else? No, that is it. Okay. All right. New business. Commissioner Flowers, subjects of importance. Miss Flowers? Okay. I want an old business next. Nothing in old business. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Let me go on to, okay. Go um, I was given this book when I became a commissioner by our um, independent contractor, Mr. Crowder. And in, inside this book, if you guys will look on page 11, and there's not much in our charter, but this was reenacted in the year 2000 by the legislature. It doesn't give us a lot of rules, but I think we better follow these rules. I'd like to read one, or one, two, or three of them that I believe, in my opinion, we are definitely breaking. The first one is, every commissioner, this is in the statute, not people's opinions, every commissioner, before he or she assumes the duties of such office, shall be required to give a bond in the sum of $5,000 payable to the governor, which bond shall be conditioned upon faithful performance of the duties of his or her office and the due faithful and proper accounting of all monies in the districts which shall come into his or her hands. The bond so given by the commissioner shall be approved in the same manner as is provided by general law for the approval of bonds of county officers. I checked on that general law, and it says that these bonds have to be filed with the circuit court. The failure of any person so appointed or elected as commissioner within 60 days after his or her appointment or election to give bonds shall create a vacancy 
as such commissioner and such vacancy shall be filled by appointment of the governor. Now, I asked for, I went and got my bond, which nowadays it's called a surety bond. This is not a fidelity bond, which is more like insurance. This bond required my driver's license, my social security, it's payable to the governor, and our legal counsel said that I was the only one that had one. Which gives you until, if you read this, you're a lawyer, mm -hmm. until the 6th of January, and if you guys don't have one, you're supposed to vacate your seat. Or go to jail? Well, it doesn't say. I, I mean, I, I, the only thing, the only choice if you choose not to vacate, unless y'all read this different, is I can file a writ of mandamus. Mandamus. Mandamus to ask the circuit court to, to ha, I force you guys to follow your own rule in your own book. It's a state law. Just do it. Uh, what about, can you answer this, Jim? Well, let, let her finish. I really like to put okay. this $200 check into a boat of mine, but if you move on the same page, it's like the whole page 11, nobody read it. <clears throat> Section 6, line 24 through 29, compensation of commissioners. The commissioners under the provisions of this act shall receive as compensation the sum of $5 per day for each day's service, provided the total per diem compensation for any one year for any one commissioner shall not exceed $300. We've been in violation of that for some time, apparently. No, they, 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 get, they get $5 a month. Yeah, what are they you get reading from? What are you reading well, from? How that's not the same. That's, that's travel, the, the and there's commissioner get, pay. Yeah. The commissioner pay, I pay quarterly. You haven't got one because you've only been here since... What is, who's traveling that needs... Um, it's for all the work. That I'm going to refer that to you, Mr. Benjamin. That's for everything that we do, the traveling, any expenses, anything that we do at all. If we any, any Anything that we do at all with regard to commission business. That's just a, a travel, they call it a travel allowance. Um, it's gasoline, it's time, it's... Uh, it's, it's so once it once a month, we're getting two... I mean, I'd like to have the money. We do more than once a month. We, do, we don't just stop when we come here and spend two or three hours. There's a lot of other work and homework that you do. I other, agree on that. Uh, we do I that. agree on that. We do um, other functions and, and uh, state, state uh, functions and local and city functions. So whether we do any of those in that month, we just get a flat 200 towards travel expenses. Correct. Hmm. Most of the time you'll do something every month, more than one thing. It says here for each day service. I'm not sure about that. I, I'm, we, you know, what do you think, Mr. Brown? You're a lawyer. I'm not anybody here's lawyer. The lawyer that we would need to right. ask that question to is sitting over there. All right, well, I just have one more thing off page. Oh, what do you, you obviously think that's okay to call it a travel expense instead of pay. I think it probably is, yeah. All right. Well, we'll just look at that later. Then one last... I'll point out to you that this pay provision allows for 60 days pay per year. $5 per day. $5 per day for each day's service. Yep. With a total per diem compensation for any one year not to exceed 300 Right. It just doesn't say anything in this about approving additional monies for us to be paid. No, it doesn't. That, that would be under a contract or something like that. So I'm very suspicious of that. And I don't want this payment that I'm getting every time I sit in here and sit down to be coming back on me. I do not want to be implicated in taking pay I don't have coming because I can't find anywhere in here where it authorize, authorizes us to pay ourselves any other money. One last thing I have is we held last first meeting and it was done correctly as far as I can tell we elected uh, we had elections and we elected or you guys elected Mr. Rivers. Um, for some reason we had no election for the chairman. We did. When was that? Uh, so Three months ago. Okay so that is not correct. Officers, this is section 7, conducts of meetings as soon as practical after said commissioners shall have been elected or appointed. So we have a new board. They shall meet and organize and shall elect one of their numbers as chair. We have not had a, you, you basically took the chairmanship after the election without being elected. Actually, I could see you holding that for the first meeting, but during that meeting you held elections and you chose not to hold elections for the chair that you hold. And that's what the law says. It doesn't say you can do it three months before. It says as soon as you can after the election. And you did hold it for the vice. All right, it's no problem. We can handle that. And it's, you know, it's just that everything I look at, there's something wrong. That's all. <clears throat>
So that's all I have to say about that particular one. But um, <clears throat> back very quickly to the to the surety bond. You guys can't serve legally without that bond. You had 60 days to do it. And I'm really upset that somebody didn't tell me, in particular you, Mr. Beslow, so that I was supposed to do this bond before I ever came to the First Commission. Are you ready to allow me to talk? Excuse me? I said, are you ready to allow me to talk? You can talk any time, sir. <clears throat> well, the, there is a blanket bond that covers the, the commission. That's not what the law says. Uh, well, it does function in the same way because this bond is, uh, that's uh, talked about in the charter, is for the accounting of monies. The bond that covers us through insurance and has for more than 20 years. So this is very specific. It's underlined. It was added. Can I talk? Is it my turn to talk? Go right ahead. Okay. I, I gave you the courtesy of... Go right ahead, sir. I gave you the courtesy of... Go right ahead. Okay. So we have a blanket bond for a million dollars. It covers uh, all sorts of ills. It covers liability and it covers uh, misdeeds by elected officers and officials. Um, and has been in place uh, ever since I've been here, which is 10 years, and was in place according to the insurance... Uh, agency for 20 years or longer and I've never known anybody to have a bond because the county commissioners do we're covered by bonds you're you're all covered already I'm sorry sir I'm gonna if you disagree with me and we have a difference of opinion then I'll file the writ of mandamus on Friday morning with the court because this is very very clear and your insurance does not cover this because this is not the same as insurance this makes sure that we don't have a felon serving on Boards. No, it does not. Yes, sir, it does because they. How does it do that? Well, first of all, they ran a criminal background check and a credit check on me in order to get this bond. Well, you I've know done that a lot. Felons can be a, uh, elected well, to public they? office. Well, I tell you what, then they should have taken this out instead of adding it in in 2000. It doesn't say anything about felons. That's something you're. Complaining. No, that's what I did when I went to do research on why I needed to have one of these. Well, and I, was, I read that it was justified for that reason, so that now, th this is, again, your insurance is not payable to the governor. Your insurance is payable to whomever sues us. It's payable to whoever has a loss, and the governor has a loss whenever this they bond, I, Okay, we disagree. Let me answer your question. When, when, the, when tax money is frittered away or stolen, it's the, it's the state that has a loss. The governor is the head of the state. So that's why the bonds are made payable to the governor. It's actually the government and the state. So uh, the insurance that covers this board is insurance that covers not just for activities of the board, but for liability things too. There are a lot of different uh, um, endorsements. It's public entity insurance. It's commonly used. Has it been approved for? Has it been approved in the same manner as provided by general law for the approval of bonds of county officers? Has it been filed with the circuit court? Is, again, it's not payable to the law. You know the law means exactly what it says, and it does not say anywhere here. You, this is you're exempt if you have a. This is in addition to insurance, and it is not an insurance. A surety bond is not an insurance policy. A surety bond is most no, a fidelity bond is an insurance policy, and they did do away with those. So if you disagree, sir, and you're not, as legal counsel, going to ask commissioners who do not hold this bond required by you your own... To give a bond. You know, a bond is just a, 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 an agreement with, with somebody to pay money. Okay, you go bond. try to get a bond, and this is what you're going to end up with, exactly what I gave to you. It's called a you public... Do you have a public insurance? official bond for every one of your commissioners? Yes. You do not, sir. Yes, That do. blanket insurance policy, okay. We disagree. I will file the writ and we'll have it, we'll have it looked at. It doesn't, uh, yes, sir, and I looked at that. Listen, let me put in here that we hire the attorney. We pay him. He is a legal expert for this board, and we have to trust him. Well, sir, and I, I like disagree. Let me talk. It's my turn. And I believe that, my belief is that this board should start working in harmony with each other. Uh, there's something that you have to understand when you, when you get on the board. You have no power. I have no power. Matt has no power. The only way we have power is when we work together. 
That's the only way. And um, I would like to move the agenda and get the meeting going again. Okay, so that subject right now. That's no, you can't close the subject, sir. Uh, I'm making a motion to move the agenda. And okay, before you do that, I'm going to finish my statement. Okay. And my statement is, if you do not resign from your seat because you refuse to have to follow the law that you gave me, it's right here. You, you want to distort it, you want to call it a blanket policy, I will be filing a writ on Friday morning and we'll have it looked at and they will move that right to the top of the docket. In lieu of that being said, please do not, I would like the board not to vote on anything because I believe you are serving illegally. Well, now let me interject. Okay. Okay, let's see. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm not resigning. Okay? You don't need, I didn't I'm, I'm not finished. Let me finish. Okay? I'm not going to resign. And I would advise any of the elected commissioners here that are here not to resign. You know, we have an attorney that will handle anything that we need to be handled. Okay? You do what you want to do. Okay. Okay? And we'll take it from there. I'm not going to resign either. It, uh, it uh, never crossed my mind. No. I agree that you guys... So I've got to make the big bucks here. Yeah. You guys certainly can form a quorum, but... This will be looked at by one of the judges then. Can I go on with my other things now? Please do. Okay. There's my surety bond. So, by just for public record, I did purchase my surety bond. It is required that all premiums on official bonds required this act shall be paid for from funds of the district, and I would like to get my $340 back. You need to have permission before you go ahead and spend money on your own. You can't just this assume, is I'm not finished, you, you cannot just on your own go ahead and buy a bond or anything that you want to do without permission from sir, the Sir, you court. gave me this booklet when I joined this commission the very first day. I went home, I read it, I did exactly what the book told me to do, and I'm here to, I would like to receive my $340 I paid for this four-year bond. Are you, are you refusing to... We'll take it under consideration when no, the attorney makes please, his decision. I'd like to make a motion to have myself reimbursed for doing what the law says. I would not support that motion. I will not either. Anybody in support of the motion? No, if, if our attorney says that we're covered by a bond and then you want us to, want to double dip, I don't It's know. not double dipping, sir. Well, you just look, got, you look, guys just look, agreed look, to do what you want to do. You, you hash it out with the legal department. Okay. We'll do that. But we're not here to we'll do pay that. you money for stuff that you just did on your own without Again, I did not do it on my own. I did not make this law, and it is in your book. Okay. So I, I, I can't I'll understand how you can even look at me and not know, acknowledge it, it that is, to say I did something on my difficult. own. It is difficult. You're correct. So why don't we just leave it? Can you read it? the law? Yeah, I can read the law. Okay. Is it in the, is and, it in the court yes, handbook? Yes, and I'm relying on the legal counsel of this board. Oh, Lord. Okay. We'll leave that at that. Okay, good. So, we're okay, so are we going to be able to elect the chairman? Sure. Sure. Okay. Let's call for an election of the chairman. Uh, is there anybody that would like to be the chairman? I nominate Barry Benjamin for chairman. I'll second it. I would like to nominate Mr. Brown. Okay. All right. Okay. I, um, I guess I'll you second the nomination. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry, Matt. Next time around. I mean, you can't vote for yourself. Sure you can. Well, no, you yeah. absolutely yeah. cannot. You didn't let him vote for yourself just last, just in November. You said you can't vote for yourself. I didn't say you that. You can vote the president. Well, I guess we're going to have to look at the thing well, again. I'm going to argue with you. Okay? You cannot vote for but yourself. Move on and take care of poor business. This is not Do really you good. remember him doing that and telling yeah. Mr. Rivers you cannot vote for yourself? You can vote for himself. You could vote for himself. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's fine, because y'all won't be here too much longer anyway. Okay. <laughs> Okay, hold on just a minute here. This is a nice spirited meeting. No, you know, the problem is if everything I did, everything I looked at wasn't wrong, you'd feel differently. But everything I look at, is, I, you do wrong. Ms. Flowers, try Okay, I'm not done. Business. I'm a new business, and oh, I've been yeah. given. A, you guys don't play on our team. Try and you're certainly not representing the taxpayers. We'll team. get to that in a lesson. Oh, boy, would I like to. Yeah, yeah no sense. Sure we'll get to the way you're not playing on a team in just a little bit. Do you have anything else? Mr. Legal Counsel, I have a letter from the Division of Elections, and they need me to do an oath and send them a check. Is this oath something that you could do for me? I certainly can. All right. Do we do that today, or should I? Right now. There's a certain form that has to be signed. Do you have that form? You have to download it from the yeah. Department of State. Well, then I need, I don't have the form, so we'll have to, I'll have to stop by your offices. Well, no I've got a spare one. Should I give it? Sure. There's a form. <laughs> it's a form they want me to send in. It has to be signed by a person able to give the oath. 
Yep, you can get it right at this. Uh, yeah. The notary can do any, that. Any notary can do that. that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I can stop by your office with that form. Sure. All right. Everybody in the office is a notary. Okay. Excellent. Um, I'd like to look at our independent um, consult consultant, Mr. Crowder. Okay. Mr. Crowder is an independent consultant. Again, I'm just looking at everything, trying to figure it all out. I don't understand why he has a business card that, although it says consultant, it carries the seal of this port. He is not an employee. He is a consultant, no different than our other independent contractors. And to carry this, I've not even been offered a business card yet. I would like to have one if I could with the seal of this port. But I believe this is impersonating that he has some, a power he does not have as an independent consultant. Consultant. He's a consultant. We consult It with says him. right here in his contract he's an independent contractor. Yes. Contractor, consultant. Okay. Anyways, why would someone who's not on the board or an employee of the board specifically have the seal? And I could see him having a business card with the name of his business. We officially appointed him. Yeah. I understand you appointed him a consultant, but he is That's not an employee us. or... <clears throat> independent contractor means he gets paid for the work he does. I understand. No, no salary. Don't you think that's kind of trivial? I, I mean, don't. I think no. I don't think it's it? trivial. And here's why I don't think it's trivial. I do. Well, I would like to give you a reason why I don't think it's trivial. Okay, go ahead. You guys do every single thing Mr. Crowder has ever asked you to do. He apparently goes as a consultant and goes all around consulting for board business. When you pull out nothing, that's what you hired him to do. But he needs to pull out a business card that does not indicate that he works for other than as an independent contractor. I don't think it's trivial when nobody's, has anybody offered you a card? Or said where we could get our cards with this emblem? You will get them. You that's a lot of power and authority to have this card with this emblem and not even be elected to this board. So it's just another one. We can't get together and work together if we can't get things ironed out that aren't being done correctly. This symbol was also used at the regatta of lights on the tent that thousands of people saw. They're not on this board either. No, that was something that you sponsored. I would imagine that we would put our symbol out there if it's some, something we gave money for, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't giving any particular person authority. Let's go. So I'd like, you know, could we make a I'll motion to yourself. discuss that? All right. What else you got? Let's see. I'm really glad we got a sunshine uh, book because I'd like to remind the commissioners, if it's okay with legal counsel, that all of the liaisons from other governments to this board are also part of the sunshine law. So if Mr. Piggott calls up a member of this board and discusses board business, that's a violation of sunshine law. Okay, then we need to have that looked at too. That'll go, that'll, we have it on record. Let me give you the short answer to it. Okay. If you and Mr. Brown have a discussion on the telephone about port business, that's a sunshine violation. If you and Mr. Crowder have a discussion on the telephone about port business, that's not a violation because he's not. Mr. Crowder, I'm not, I didn't ever mention Mr. Crowder. I said the liaisons from other government what departments. What about uh, Ms. Kemper or Mr. Blow? I said government liaisons. They are speaking, for example, Mr. Piggott speaks for the city of St. Augustine, and he is definitely, his he's a liaison for the city. Records, his written records are public records. Your records. He cannot contact a member of this board solely, especially out of the sunshine, discuss poor, okay, then this will, that's a, that's a serious criminal violation. We have it on record. Violation. Okay, you are a, the, a really bad lawyer. <laughs> you should read a little book. Guys. Honey, I have it. It's right on my, I've got it all highlighted. Right. Why you don't know that the, the liaison is... Okay. Why don't you call up Isabel Lopez okay. and ask her. Pardon? Isabel Lopez runs the city legal department, yeah. and she'd be glad to tell you that Mr. Piggott no, and anybody from the county... Tell me what you said. Well, then I just want to make it on public record then. According to the Sunshine Law, as I read it, and it's about that thick, okay... Liaisons from city governments to boards like this are, in fact, subject to all of the Sunshine Laws. And if these people call up board members or meet with board members out of the Sunshine, it's a clear violation at $10,000 a shot. So if you don't agree with that, just please go get the whole thing. I just printed it out. Wish I had brought that with me today. 
Sandy, I can even talk to the mayor of St. Augustine if I want to. I go you can to talk Jim. to the mayor. The mayor is not the liaison. <clears throat> Jim is the is an employee of the city, but the mayor is an elected official. I can talk. You got to it wrong, darling. I He's a liaison to this board. I can talk to Undine George. You sure can. Mayor, anytime I want you to. You sure it's can. It's not a violation of the same. No, it's law. not. But if you talk to that city's that department's liaison to this board. You are violating the Sunshine Law. And I bet, it, from what I'm hearing now, y'all must do this all the time. Okay. Do okay. this. Prove it between now and the I will get, No, I, that's going to go with the civil. Prove I'm it, filing it. It's going to go it with the writing, filing. So we can see logically how you came to I mean, that. Everything that I, if everything, you can find this. It took me 17 minutes. I'm asking you to do it. I, I will bring it to you, but by that time I would have already filed it in court because you guys with our legal counsel are convinced that city government, county government, would they send a representative into this board? And even when Sam comes in here, the harbor master, and he's representing the city, when he's doing that, he is subject to the sunshine laws. He's meeting, yeah, when he's doing it. That's Mr. Piggott is identified in the, in the manual as the city of St. Augustine liaison, just like I, I suppose Mr. Myers is for the county. Right. They're both subject to the sunshine law. Okay? Right. So if you don't believe me, I will, I'll tell you what, I will email you guys the section and the line numbers. Good. And then you can look at it. And it's very specific. Lady and gentlemen, we're wasting a lot of time. We're here to represent a lot of entities in city and county government, and we need to get down to business and stop all this bickering. I'm anxious to hear from the representatives from government. I had one more thing that's business related. Go ahead. You'll like this one, though. Last time we were here, I was talking about boat landings and how come we don't have ways for people to get into water. Like Mr. Brown here, I think all of us have an easy way to get into water, but Lord knows, Mr. Brown, if you go in the middle of a Saturday morning. One, anyways, Mr. Blow stood up and said, when I commented this and everybody, I think Mr. Benjamin, you said, oh, it would be too hard and traffic problems and... I don't think I said anything like that. Well, you, you didn't like the May Street thing because I think it was a traffic issue for you. And then Mr. Blow said, oh, no, we couldn't turn that mud bank into some kind of boat landing because it's too hard and there would be permits and they wouldn't let us and blah, blah, blah. Well, my again, in 18 minutes, I found the nationwide permit number 636 for boat ramps. Activities required for construction of boat ramps provided the activity meets all the criteria. Now this just came up March 19th of 2017. It's over a year old. What is it? Well, this is a nationwide permit, number 36. That means there's no paperwork. You don't have to call. You just go do it if you meet these conditions. Well, what are those conditions? Good Lord, we got all kinds of prop of public property we already own. For example, if you pass those around, when I mentioned May Street, the mud bank, May Street's not a mud bank, it's a neglected, derelict, old boat ramp. It has a boat ramp, it has a piece of road on there, it's a perfect, perfect place for one of these, again, I can't believe that this board doesn't know about a nationwide permit that doesn't require time, effort, anything. What agency promulgated that permit? And The United States Corps of Engineers. But does it preempt state and local permitting? Not the United, no. Well, Mr. Blow just told, we go, this is who we go to, the United States Corps of Engineers, to get our permits to do these boat ramps and put things in the water and dredging. And it's... It's the reason I was told that the Lincolnville kayak ramp just could never get done because it was going to take years and years and years to get the permitting. So yes, we have to, these are the waters of the United States. So the United States Army Corps of Engineers tells us what to do. So in fact, it would not take too long. It would not be too hard. We would not even have to get a permit because it's already given. If you could just uh, give me one more second on these few points. So the nationwide permit is allowed with nothing. You don't even have to notify anybody. A, if the discharge into the, into the waters of the United States does not exceed 50 cubic yards of concrete, rock, crushed stone or gravel into forms, or in the form of precast concrete blanks or, uh, planks or slabs. Unless the district engineer waives the 50 cubic yard limit, that's a lot, 50 cubic yards we can do a lot with on a place like that. Or B, the boat ramp does not exceed 20 feet in width. That's not a problem. 
I don't, you don't have 20 feet at where the concrete is going into the water there now. The base material is crushed stone, gravel, other suitable material. I mentioned that Mr. Hersey will bring you a, a truck load of this for $100. And they have this kind of shell that as it perks and you drive on it, it locks down as hard as we, they put this in the parking lot of Hidden Harbor. And it's, it's like pavement. Or the excavation is limited to the area necessary for the site preparation and all excavated materials are moved to an area that has no waters in the United States and no material is placed in specific aquatic sites, including the wetlands. That is a perfect opportunity right there to use this nationwide permit that requires virtually nothing to be done other than a little tiny Where bit of engineering. Where is this? May Street. May Street. Right. Well, that's one place. There's another place. Um, um, maybe Carl could talk to the, I mean, being able to put a ramp there, but you still have to deal with access to the, to the roadway, and that's DOT, am I correct? There's already a road there. No, not that there's a road there, but access, street lights, who's coming on and off the road. I know that place well, I've, I've lived here my whole life. And you start putting trailers and trying to get out on May Street there, you don't have problems. Nobody said you had to do trailers. <laughs> this could be an excellent non-motorized launch. It would keep all kinds of people with non-motorized boats out of the terrible current and the busyness of the big boat ramp well, right down the road. With, with the traffic in and out of there, you, you will have to deal with the DOT. I can assure you. But I'm that. sure that we'll be all right. That's so it's not. Thought, so what, what you're saying is there. it was a blanket permit. That's not correct. Well, yes, sir, it is. I just read you okay. exactly you're what right. it says. You're right. You're Nationwide right. Nationwide permit, right. number 36, right. United States no Army Corps of Engineers. No, it'll be, it would be no problem. You have to deal with the, with the DOT, then we will deal with the DOT. So it's not a blanket permit. It is for the boat ramp, sir. Not for the ramp, but being able to well, access the DOT. I thought DOT. you were trying to get along. That's all right. <laughs> I am trying. Again, I am informing the board that there is a permit. We do not have to talk to the Army Corps of Engineers, Mr. Blow. And this has been around for a year and a half. Okay, I just wanted you to know. Well, I, I can say whatever I want, actually. No, but I mean, uh, you, you have a, an engineer, Taylor Engineering. Is, is oh, no, I'm advising you because you told me that we would have to go through a long permitting process. It would be very, very difficult and way too hard. I so I want. Stand by that statement, okay, it, it won't. It won't. And I wanted to show you one other spot, too. Here's a great spot. Just south of English Landing, which John Valdez has done a great job of. This is public property. Used to have a, um, oh, Thomas the Stonemason or whatever was there. You pass that down. Now it's just a bunch of rubble all pushed up. Again, non-motorized. Actually, there's a public road right there that runs through English Landing is what I was told. I can't find that on the internet, but um, certainly an excellent spot for these little tiny boat ramp permits. And it's also an excellent spot to be able to come up in your dinghy and do some shopping with all those wonderful shops right there. So if you're looking to support the cruisers and the money they bring to our marine community, this is another place that we could put it that we already own. It won't cost us this, won't cost us a million dollars. So I, I was very excited to find that, and I hope we can look into using it. I am, yes. Okay, great. Thank you for all your information, and we'll certainly take some of that under consideration. Um, I'm sure our legal counsel will look into most of all the uh, allegations that you, you've leveled. Um, I do want to say one thing. I'm not trying to sound smart, but you don't have a clue on what it takes to get these things done. But that's all. That's just me personally. Well, it does help a lot when you don't need a permit from the court, though, uh, doesn't it's, it? It's, gonna, it's a lot more to it than that. But, but doesn't it, that make a sense? That that's a big deal that we don't need that permit. I think you'll okay. find out. But whatever okay. it is, let's you know, get moving, because at least we own the property. We don't have to spend the million dollars. According to you, we're not going to be here for another couple of weeks. Well, so. I, if, you're, if you don't have your surety bond, you don't want to follow the law. Okay. We're up, now we're up to um, government representative comments. <laughs> Public comment, uh, government representatives, that's law enforcement. City. City. Good afternoon, Jim Pig of the City of St. Augustine. Uh, we've identified two additional boats outside the city limits and a mast. There's uh, the mast and another vessel south of the 312 bridge and a boat north of the Usina bridge on a, in, a, in a marsh. Um, the 
the total cost, we're going to go for a fine grant, seventy-five twenty-five. so your total cost would be $4,500. We think that's on the high side, we hope. Um, but I just want to see if you're willing, if you want us to go for that grant, to have those two boats in the mast removed. The uh, navigation in the channel? The mast is not, I can let law enforcement talk more about it. One's in a marsh. The mast, I'm not sure. Steve Zukowski, Lieutenant Fish and Wildlife Commission. Of the three boats Mr. Pickett's referring to, one is in the unofficial anchorage over there by Crane Park Boat Ramp. Uh, that boat, our divers dove on it. It's not a nav hazard even at low tide except for the mast. Uh, and it's not recommended that we remove the vessel because there's not enough integrity to the vessel. It would all come up in all sorts of shards and pieces. So uh, we're just recommending on that one that just the mast be cut off and removed on that one. There's another boat that's up in the ICW, uh, just northwest, excuse me, northeast of the uh, airport. That one's been sitting in a marsh for a while. It's a sailboat. Um, that one could be very easily removed. It appears to still be, have integrity to it. And that one, I know uh, at, that a, uh, at a flood tide, if someone get a cable on it with a powerful enough tug or barge, get that one out of there. So that's, one, that's the other one we're referring to. And then there's another one down there also in the southernmost part of the Crane Park unofficial anchorage yeah. down there. That's the but that's the history of the mast one. Yeah. Okay. And have they been identified or anything like that? Okay. Well, those are Nothing from the owners or anything like that? No, um, they've either, uh, correspondence has either come back as undeliverable, uh, the, okay. uh, the return okay. receipt, so it's come back, or there, or there were no identifiers on the vessel to try to track down a responsible party. What would you recommend? To remove those boats or let that one, at least the one stay there that's not in the hazard except for the mast that sticks out? Well, no, <clears throat> that one, I definitely recommend that we remove the mast. Um, the other one south of there needs to be removed because that one could be break, broken apart, become a nav hazard. The one in Marsh is more than anything else an environmental hazard. Okay. So that's why that one should be uh, removed. Okay. Can you tell me where they take those boats? The, we take the boats down to our Riveria Point, we break them up, and then we dispose of them with our shallow waste crews. Uh, do they grind up that fiberglass? <clears throat> I, I couldn't tell you how they break them up. We bring them to the appropriate landfill to dispose of them. Do you know there's some people in Europe, and a guy in Rhode Island, they grind up fiberglass, and you put that ground up old nasty fiberglass into the road stuff, and the road becomes impervious to water. So if we could use that, uh, but they don't make it back to the river, do they? The amount of boats that we pull probably wouldn't do more than this table right here. That are fiberglass, most of them are wood. Okay, so I mean, but they go, they go down there and they're destroyed, so they can't go back to the river. Some, somebody sells them off as another derelict boat out of Eki's yard or they're something. They're destroyed. Okay. What do you think? It's the last, that's the last of them, right? Well, I'll never say the last, because... I mean, yeah, we haven't found any more. This is all we know of right now. Yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, that's part of what this board does, so I'm going to vote that we match the funds. Well, it's only 4500 and fine has... The rest. Your quarter and their three quarters. Okay, so it's okay. not much money anyway, then. Yeah. Okay, yeah. All right. Who does the contract on that? The city, we apply to the Florida Inland Navigational District to apply for the grant. I mean, who's the contractor that takes those boats up? The city has two <laughs> contractors, Boat US and... Oh, so the tow boat? C yeah. C they go out there and just tow them over to... Right. <clears throat> I make a motion to approve that. I, I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right. Law enforcement. Josh Underwood, St. John's County Sheriff's Office, Marina. I just have statistics from last port meeting to this port meeting. Okay. We had 92 hours on the water, um, 51, out, 51 calls for service, 14 vessel inspections, 19 marine enforcement warnings were issued, and four marine enforcement citations. No new derelict or abandoned boats in the port district. 
that's all I have. Unless right. you guys got anything for me. No, any questions or anything? No. Okay. Thanks, Josh. Okay. Oh, Josh. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, what was the deal on that marker over in Salt Run? Is that all done now? It's still. It's still like in this. the middle of the channel. Who's our contractor? In the middle. It's still in its place. It's just leaned over. Okay. So it's marked, but it's just falling down. Right. Right. And it's got a ball, an orange. Okay, so the last email, I'm sure that is becoming pretty dangerous. I mean, even though it's in its place, if it's laying down, who is our contractor to go deal with that? Right. What you do is you would call our secretary, and our secretary can get in contact with uh, Taylor Engineering, and they can have that taken care of. Well, it's been down since the 29th of November, and we've done nothing? Three weeks, yeah. Looking in the middle of there. cruising season, we have a marker down? We'll take care of it. It is Who's marked, the contractor? It is marked on the Coast Guard's private aids list, too, that it's down. Okay. But why, okay, have we contacted the contractor to remove it yet? No, we have not. Is that something you can take care of? Yes, we can take okay. care of that. Right. Uh, why haven't we done, I mean, he was, I don't understand that. He, we've received too many emails. See, this is what I'm talking about. That's derelict of our duty. We are the responsible board. That's the, it's cruising season. It's dangerous. It could kill somebody, especially at night. Is it lit at all, mister? No, none yeah. of those markers in Salt Rock. Okay, so none of them have any light. So when they're down, they're just, Lord have mercy. I could see Cop Jerry going through there with his new cop boat right now. And not, <clears throat> I'm really disappointed that it's been down that long and nobody's made a call. And I've, I've sent an email on it too, but to no response. Mr. Joshua sent it an email. Uh, marked with a reflective line and an uh, orange buoy. Right. Who did you send the email to? To, to the board? Okay, I, I thought it was to Elise. I'd have to go to check. I, you know, I, it was a I response going back to I thought it was to the whole board. It was yesterday. Well, he emailed everybody on the board. I emailed the secretary. That okay, and she, she sent it to all of us. Right. She notified the Coast Guard and the board. Right. We got, I got email, bam, bam, and I kept, what's going on? And I sent an email. It's like, I'll go move it myself. Could I get some res no response whatsoever? I mean, it could kill somebody, and we, it means it's liable. We're liable for it. And none of that is dereliction of duty. I don't think it's we're liable for it, but we will take care of it, though. Should we I try guess. to formalize that process a little bit in case that happens yeah. next time? Yeah. Maybe we should try to, between here, well, between now and the next time we meet. And again, who is the contractor that would be called? And I mean, I can't get an answer why we haven't called him. Well, it probably would have been um, Chip. Okay. And so if Mr. Yelton, is, maybe a good thing would be to have more than one person who can do it. So, because I'm sure Mr. Yelton is busy, he's very popular, and does a great job, yeah. and maybe somebody else could come do it when he's not available. Brant. So no, we, we've also used yeah. Brant's Diversified in the past, and the way this has worked in the past, you request me to do something, I'll, I'll contact the, the contractors, get proposals, and then you approve of that, that work to be done. Well, Chip's so, real, real sick right now. <clears throat> Okay. Real um, sick. So maybe we. So need again, to we received an email from law enforcement about a marker that we're responsible for, and it's been since the November 29th. That sound about what's been down. I think the last thing was November 29th. He sent a second email telling us it was still down, and I sent an email back saying, "Why aren't we doing anything? Who's the contractor? I'll go do it, my and I will go do it myself. Will it come out of the ground?" Probably not. I've, I've towed plenty of floating uh, markers all the way to the city marina with a dinghy. It's still... It's still stuck in there. Okay. And over. Well, I just think it's horrifying that, you know, the general cruising public and boating public has had an unmarked, unlighted marker laying down to be hit. So if we could do that. And Mr. Brown, that's a great idea. Establishing something that can act fast would be great. We actually have that process in, in effect. If... Um I can approve up to a certain amount of money without talking to anybody else. If so, if, if I had known about it, I would have approved it and taken care of it. The first time I heard about it was yesterday. Well, I'm sorry about that, Mr. Benjamin, so maybe that's the process we need to fix. Yeah, we'll, just, yeah, we'll, we'll make sure that... that and any commissioner can spend, I think it's up to $400, you know, if, if they see an emergency and they, they, they can call one of our contractors and have it taken care of. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, to, to, to pull and, that, yeah. to pull that pile, if it is yeah. still there and just bent over, and to replace it, it's it's going to require a barge, and yeah. I mean it's not going to be a couple hundred bucks. I can tell you that. But it could be a little barge, like yeah. I mean, you would have to be able to, barge, yeah. to to pull that that pile out. It's probably 
if I had to guess, is probably 10 or 12 feet into the muck. So next time this happens, what what is the ideal procedure? What does that look like? What you should we do. We get, is. let's say, at least forwards us an email yeah. from Josh saying that somebody else has knocked a, yeah. knocked a marker over. What, what do we do? Well, I, th I would suggest that we contact. There's a, there's a few marine contractors here in town. Um, one of the one of the problems, and, and I know for because it's in my business, is that you talk to almost any marine contractor in St. Augustine, they say call me in 2020. I mean, it, there's really it's really bad with getting them to to do stuff. But um, if there was a, a contractor that we could enter an agreement with that would be willing to drop what they're doing and, and go do stuff like that, I think that would have to be discussed with the contractor. But just calling a marine contractor here in town and tell them, hey, can you, can you go pull a pile next week? They say no next year. So maybe that's something we need to explore yeah. and get a contract yeah. with a retainer. So that we're getting our own little care. tiny barge. <laughs> get ourselves a boat. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. yeah, they're actually really not bad. I had people rebuild the dock where I work, and um, they came in with this little old nothing with a thing on it, and they pulled the piles, put new, and they were putting piles in plenty deep, and uh, well, well, it was on a trailer. Well, the problem too is when you replace a pile, <clears throat> if you just jet it in, it's going to lean over again. It's got to be pounded to resistance. You got to go through the muck and get to the hard pan. Mm -hmm. So anybody goes out there and jets a piling in, that pile will fail. Just telling you. I don't think he jetted them in. I'm just well, saying smaller, smaller things than what Mr. Well, I know, but if you're, if you're, if if you're talking about a small barge, a, a very small barge that ha doesn't have a, the ability to drive pilings, and I mean hammer them, not jet them, and you'll see a lot of the docks, particularly out like on the St. John's River, you'll see all these docks just constantly leaning over. Those were all piles that were jetted in. It's cheaper, faster, um, but to do a pile in moving water in Salt Run is gonna take a marine contractor with the ability to drive piles and to pull that thing out. I mean, that's, that's what's gonna need to be done. So we need to find a marine contractor that A, has a time or is at least willing to say we'll do port business and, and pull out a pile. So how do we start that process? Ta Taylor Engineering has all the contacts for that. Okay. Uh, the thing to do, would, if you had that kind of problem, you saw, call Taylor Engineering, tell them what, you, what somebody's reported to you, they look into it, they'll call me, and we'll get an approval and call and take, take care of it right away. Great. That's how it works. It's a simple thing. Good. The only problem is $400, uh, just like Mr. Ray was saying, is it going to cover the job? Not that bad. Uh, well, that's only that's, for that's, an that's, immediate emergency. Right. This is something we, yes. would, we would ultimately end up yeah. paying for later, I'm sure. Yep. Yeah. You have the authority up to four hundred dollars, and of course, no one costs. This job is probably going to be thousands. It costs. We can't have we can't have markers down yeah. uh, for a month at a time or more. It just well, it cannot it's, happen. It sounds like this was weeks. a, a one-time right. slip up, but yeah. generally speaking, going forward, I think we'll we'll see. I've been with this. I've been watching this river for fifteen years, Mr. Brown. Well, and, and this board for, for about 12, so you're, you're, it's not the first time, sir, is all I'm telling you. You're here to keep us honest from here on out. Okay, so it's, I just, and, and it, it needs to be correct that it is not the first time. <clears throat> okay. Steve Zukowski, Fish and Wildlife Commission, Patrol Supervisor, Lieutenant for Coastal Flagler, St. John's Counties once again. Uh, start off with boating and waterways notes. Um, it's a fairly short list uh, this uh, month. Uh, we had our two local boat parades, Palm Valley uh, boat parade back on December um, 1st, and then we had the Regatta Lights boat parade on Saturday, December 8th. The Palm Valley parade, the weather was pretty bad. Um, but nothing unusual, extraordinary from that, according to my two officers up there. Regatta of Lights, we had very mild weather on the 8th. Uh, we had an incoming tide, a slight incoming tide. It went very smooth. We had also, on that we had, uh, let's see, two FWC boats out there, um, two, sit, um, two Sheriff's Department boats. Uh, we had uh, fire rescue from the city and the county. Coast Guard Zilla out there, and also we had we had towboat or sea tow out there. I can't remember. Tow. Tow. Okay, thank you. So we had plenty of boats there. It went pr pretty well. We also had uh, 
uh, both from Coast Guard Auxiliary, like I mentioned, and we had personnel from the Coast Guard Reserve up at Sector Jackson come down and ride with the Sheriff's Office boats and to our FWC boats also. So we had plenty of um, a presence there and visibility for that one, and that one went uh, smoothly as it did as it has gone for the last couple of years. Uh, about the only thing really of note <clears throat> that's happened uh, since the last meeting, board meeting was. Uh, this past Sunday night, Officer Bill Miller, who was here with me last last month, um, he had a BUI arrest on Sunday night, and it was pretty noteworthy in that it involved uh, battery on law enforcement officer resisting without violence in addition to the BUI charge and a couple of navigation light issues there. What happened was, uh, I think it was somewhere between 8 and 9 o'clock, we had a Sarah Consul boat running blacked out in the area of the um, Porpoise Point. Point. Or there by Volano, the boat had been reported by some uh, uh, city marina, municipal marina personnel as uh, blowing through the zone under the bridge, blacked out bridge alliance. So Officer, Officer Miller uh, conducted an inspection and boarding, found the operator to be, he was a big person, six foot four, you know, almost 300 pounds, uh, operating under the influence. Officer Miller uh, brought the guy in the boat over to the uh, temporary floating dock over there at the Volano Pier and conducted a battery of um, field sobriety tasks. Officer uh, Dave Ramsey, who was working inland, some of the hunting clubs heard on the radio, he came over to assist. Uh, the, uh, the boater, the operator was very belligerent once he was arrested. Uh, profanity all over the place. Uh, resisting, all, kicking one of the officers, you know, um, trying to, uh, you know, headbutt the officers to do stuff like that. It was so bad, I think uh, one of the tour boats is over there. One of the, I think the operator or someone from one of the tour boats came over and basically said to the guy, hey, pipe down, please. we got, you know, children and people here. So uh, ended, up, uh, ended up there was some use of force had to be taken on the guy. Uh, the guy to subdue him. He was taken to the jail. But he, um, you know, he, he blew over the limit, legal limit, so he was definitely voting under influence. He was also charged with battery on uh, law enforcement officers times two, resisting without violence, and then also uh, failure to use or have navigation lights on his vessel. So that was a pretty interesting one um, because uh, a review of the defendant's criminal history shows he's had battery on a law enforcement officer before, DUI arrests, things like that. So we're going to be having a meeting with the state attorney probably next week, hopefully, to see what's um, you know to see what sort of disposition we're going to ask for, because um, this one might warrant jail time, given the fact that he's a repeat he has a repeat felony violation, and also battery on law enforcement officer twice. So this is just some of the stuff that goes out goes on out there, folks, and very fortunate that Officer Miller, um, that uh, Officer Ramsey, who is working inland on some hunting issues, was listening to the radio, and uh, he was able to come by and assist him uh, with that. So that was, that's probably the biggest incident that happened uh, since the last board meeting. In terms of fisheries or resource, I mentioned last month that there's been a, you know, there, there's been a redfish slash just about a croaker frenzy up at Guana, while at the dam area. That's slowing down now as the weather is got a stabilization getting cooler so we're not having as many arrests for the cast netting violations or the redfish bagger size limit or snook violations that we've had up there we uh officer greener had a snook case down a flagler but that's not connected to what was going on with the guana that's slowing down offshore i can't really tell you what's going on uh for the last month um my officers and i they've been in training classes we've been in classes we've been doing other things we haven't really had a chance to get offshore yeah, they do know the shrimp boats are out there, but that's something we're going to have to follow up on um, probably in the new year. Um, basically, between logistics of training and some equipment uh, issues, we just haven't been able to go offshore and do anything. Oystering, commercial oystering in particular, is still going on. That will be steady usually through February, through Super Bowl season. And uh, officers Thomas and Megan Thomas and Josh Lawrence arrested a we had someone in Salt Run again. They had some violations for the oysters. I'm trying to remember if it was a size issue or I, or I can't remember, but it was a repeat offender who had just been arrested prior month back in November by Officer Miller for not having his oysters tagged. So he'll go to get, go see the, 
the judge again on that one. So he's got another major violation within a period of two months, and I'll see what happens with that. So that's all I have on, on this. We've already talked about derelict vessels a little bit here. Nothing new on that. Uh, and in the future, Officer Josh Greener will be here with me as part of his new duties uh, of accepting advancement to an officer specialist position. He's going to be the derelict vessel coordinator for the squad, which means he will review everything and, and get together with me before we send things you know, up to the, uh, um, the city for removal or review. Uh, and he should be given, he, part of his duties is he should be given a DV report uh, every month if there is one to give. So you'll see him there. So that's all I have. Is there, are there any questions or concerns, comments, anything for me? All right, thank you much. You. Thank you. Hey, it's Eddie Meyer, uh, Parks and Rec with uh, Sydney Lynn Blyer from Peaches. Uh, I actually uh, not here for any funding requests. Just want to give you guys some updates on some things that have been going on. Um, Sydney's got a signed package. Um, I don't know how much I elaborated last time or the meeting before that about we're rebranding uh, the boat ramps and the, and the sign package that goes along with that. If you've been by Volano lately, you'll see two new monument signs out front. Uh, it's it's the Volano landing, um, and then those two signs. One is for what we did. We started a boat so a waterway access management program, which I think I talked about in September. Um, so effectively, we've designated all the ramps and re reassigned the different parts of them. So those two is the parking area, uh, which one you'll notice with the no the no camping things like that. The other one is going to be um, at the actual <coughs> ramp itself. And these are just templates. We're using Milano as kind of like the proof. And then we're going to go forward with the remaining uh, 11 boat ramps we have uh, out of the 12. Um, if you get a chance, I would encourage you to go by Volano. It's a, it's a pretty nice on both sides. Uh, we're going to do some landscaping as well. And then after that set, we actually have a, a program that um, the Marine Patrol put in, uh, the Kids Don't Float program. So they've kind of had it on us for a while and fair play to them. But uh, we wanted to wait to put everything out at the same time. Uh, just a, a, a point of note, if you've used Volano in the past, um, we took out... 47 signs about three months ago uh, of all different shapes and sizes. So this is kind of the, the beginning of going forward on the visual side of making things look a lot better uh, on the uh, visual and aesthetic side. Um, the next thing she's got is uh, a feasibility study uh, we've entered into with Kimley Horn about some new sites. I know there were some uh, comments earlier and some expansion sites uh, that you can kind of list in detail. Um, and that was, uh, that was from a meeting uh, last week, actually. Uh, you can see the original list. Uh, we had a meeting last Thursday, and then we conversed with uh, uh, land management growth um, and uh, kind of changed some of the, the list. If you have questions on those, I can answer some things. I can't answer all of them. Uh, some of them weren't parks and rec decisions. They were more real estate and, and legal and things like that. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have any questions on that list or no the, the <coughs> I noticed the new sign that says Volano Landing yeah. and um, you know I've lived over there most of my life sure. and go down that road all the time mm -hmm. I didn't even when did they decide on a name for that has it always been called Volano Landing uh, it was called the boat ramp so about three about three months ago uh, because, as you guys know, the, the Board of County Commissioners has gone and requested information on pretty much every entity, beaches, golf course, cost recovery measures, right? So boat ramps is part of that, athletic fields is part of that. And so the boat ramps has kind of come under the microscope for various different things. Uh, the workshop, uh, which we had in October, uh, which I can talk about too, um, we had 1,100 survey responses from a survey we put out just after that. Um, those will be made available to the public uh, in the next two weeks, and I can furnish all you guys a copy for the next meeting. Um, but that actual landing idea came more from an opportunity to actually rebrand the, the, the boat ramp as it is, because it's, it, it's not just the ramp, right? I mean, there's parking, there's, 
there's amenities, there's pavilions, there's there's picnic tables. So I think the Parks and Rec and, and the county saw an opportunity to, to kind of change some people's opinions and thoughts in small ways right now, long-term financially improvements, things like that. It also kind of coincided with the fact that there's discussion openly, which I mentioned last month, about uh, the fee and the boat ramp fee and things like that and how that's looked at. Um, that's clearly in the discussion stage. There are no decisions either way. That's where the workshop kind of came into play. Uh, we got some very good responses, very animated. Um, but, but like I said, I, I didn't know if you guys had any questions on those sites. Uh, that's kind of an ongoing thing. We'll have another meeting next month. Um, hopefully get some really good feedback from Kimley Horn about a lot of those locations. On the updated list, um, letter A, are all of those, those are sites we'd have to buy? <coughs> Uh, have to buy. So, so Lewis property we do not own. Uh, the 206 property is DOT. Uh, WEF Road we do own. The only issue with WEF Road uh, is that there is no access with parking. Uh, it's similar to Green Road or Palmetto. It's probably more like Green because there is some parking. The issue would become we'd have to buy, purchase parking from St. Anastasia in the diocese, which is the closest area from WEF Road. But they're looking to identify spots where we do own or we don't own. Uh, if you look at, for example, the airport authority was on there, but they took it off because while the property is inexpensive, the dredging cost of the creek to get out to access is kind of cost prohibitive, if you will. So that was one of the considerations there. As far as the other ones, I can't speak exactly to, but if you have a specific one, maybe I, I can try. Are there many of these? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just, this is just a very preliminary list. There aren't any specifics in terms of any of these potential boat ramp or expansion projects, right? This is, you're just identifying places to even study further. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Because the, the commission basically requested us to do this. So okay. this is part of that process. And this is all trailerable boat landings. You could use a trailer. Except uh, for those two that are. Yeah. I mean, well, I think part of it, too, is. Like WEF Road, right? So Kimberly Horn could look into and say, maybe we could do a non-motorized option at this price, and a motorized option would be this price. So that's all part of it. Similar to Palmetto. Palmetto is being looked at by Gulfstream, right? So Gulfstream could come back and say, because of the turning radius at the ramp location, because of the the dirt road access, it might make sense more for paddle boards, kayaks, things like that. Long term, we don't have that answer yet, but it's currently uh, in uh, in design. Are there many of these properties that kind of fall out of our taxing district? Are there, are there any of these locations that, I'm just wondering if it came back looking for funds and to, to fund a ramp that didn't fall in our taxing authority. I don't know what uh, that would be on the board. <laughs> I can't, I mean, I don't know about, yeah, um, I some of these I don't recognize. Trout, Trout I, don't, Creek. I don't believe Trout is. Yeah. You've seen a Green Road is, Butler West is, Shore. Um, we're driving. Valley yeah. is. Yeah. I was just River, curious. Riverdale, I don't, is it? I don't think so. I don't think that is. No, either. But I think last I meeting you map. talked about expanding it at some stage too, right? Like to, yeah. The previous meeting to the whole county? Yeah. Um, Palmer, I don't believe, is in. It's the same conversation with um, Riverdale and um, and Trout. And then Deep Creek is wouldn't be in there, but that's more of a, that's obviously non-motorized. and Yeah. So. I like where you're going with it. It looks good. Yep. So, yep. the only other thing that, that we had, um, I don't know if Sydney wants to speak about the RFP real quick. I'm sure I can. So. Sydney on Black Future Services. Um, we are currently in the revision phase, um, the first revision phase for the RFP that's going to go out for off beach parking as well as um, boat ramps. Again, like Teddy had mentioned, it hasn't been approved or disapproved by the board, but um, they have instructed us to go out and get RFPs. So. That's right. Okay. And just so, you, so for your guys' reference, the RFP with Off Beach and um, the boat ramps is the idea of putting more sites together to get a better overall cost for everything, rather than just separating the two of them. Yeah. Just for record. So. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Commissioners. Call Blow, Commissioner for the <coughs> Navigation District. Uh, I got a little handout uh, for you.
sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, what you're looking at here is um, uh, a report from the Army Corps of Engineers that um, was presented to the Fine Board in our uh, meeting uh, last Friday. Um, the Corps, you know, and, and, and Fine are partners, of course, in maintaining the waterway. And so the, the Corps comes to each of our board meetings and kind of updates us on, on core projects that uh, we're partnering on. Anyway, I had, I think, mentioned this at uh, your last month's meeting that uh, due to um, uh, uh, damage from hurricanes, we had to do some maintenance dredging in the intercoastal waterway <clears throat> at both the flood shoal here at St. Augustine Inlet and also down at uh, Matanzas Inlet. Um, and I think, if I remember, and you can probably correct me on this, um, it was 30,000 yards at at St. Augustine and 50,000 at Matanzas, or vice versa. But anyway, the Corps has updated their survey, and basically those quantities increase significantly. And as you can see here, it's now 170,000 cubic yards that needs to be removed from the intercoastal channel at the flood shoal here in St. Augustine, and 150,000 cubic yards down in the intercoastal at uh, Matanzas Inlet and Summerhaven. And of course, the plan is still uh, in, in St. Augustine to put that material, it's beach quality, so it can go on the beach in Anastasia State Park. And then down uh, at uh, Matanzas, that material will go on the beach uh, in Summerhaven. Um, and as we discussed uh, last month, uh, that material is going to be placed from Monument R204 South. However, um, and this was a concern of the, the restoration folks, uh, the Summerhaven restoration folks that, that there was material needed at some point really needed to go north of R204. Uh, and so the uh, in discussions with the Corps, uh, they're, they're going to go forward and modify the permit with the Florida Department of Environmental Protection to allow us under our permit to place material uh, uh, north of 204, up to uh, or as uh, up to actually R200, which is a, is a good thing, um, because we po we const I mean we basically have to dredge that area every three to four years. So perhaps the next time we come through, we'll be able to place some material up there north, where I think it will ben benefit the uh, river restoration project. Um, if you notice down there also on the dates, um, it's projected that that uh, this project will, well, first off, this project is a small business set aside as far as uh, under the core regulations. So um, it um, uh, basically will go out to bid, and uh, if everything stays on schedule, they'll award the contract in May and then do the work during the summer, <coughs> and they should be more than complete, hopefully, by October 23rd. Um, what was going on here as far as funding is the uh, Congress uh, basically allocated uh, monies, additional monies for hurricane damage to infrastructure. And uh, the, uh, uh, the Corps received an allocation for uh, uh, dredging that was related to uh, the hurricanes along the east coast of Florida. And, and this, these were two locations where that came into play. Um, the Corps doesn't announce what the funding is because obviously this goes out for bid and we don't want to tell the contractors how much money you have or they'll bid that amount. So, uh, but because these quantities were greater than initially projected, the 30,000, 50,000, the, uh, there was a shortage. So the, uh, the, basically the Corps requested the Florida Navigation District to contribute this $2.5 million. Um, that's not unusual. Um, that does, uh, you know, the 
from year to year, basically, the, the cost of maintaining the intercoastal waterway tends to be a 50-50 a split between federal dollars and, and fine dollars, which are, are state dollars. Um, theoretically, um, the all maintenance should be paid for with federal dollars, but that hasn't happened since probably the starting in the 1970s. Uh, so, but from year to year, it fluctuates, but, but over time, it's a, it, it turns out to be about a 50-50 cost share. So, um, but I thought I'd throw that out because it, it, if you look at these quantities and, and the, the cost, a project like this or projects like this are generally run about 15 to 20 dollars a cubic yard. So, um, you know, one thing, I'll, and, and this is to the benefit of you newer commissioners, um, this this board's primary responsibility is the local sponsor with the core to maintain the the inlet, um, just like finds the the local sponsor for the intercoastal on the east coast of Florida. Um, and we, uh, these guys obviously are very familiar with this, but we've discussed this in the past that if we have a hurricane event here that closes the inlet or makes it so it's not navigable, um, basically the first person to respond will be this board. And, and that's one reason um, uh, that traditionally the board has held a, a million dollars sort of in a lockbox as, as insurance so that you have that money available if we have a storm the inlet's closed, you got to get it open again, uh, at least you have some money to perhaps get out there and, and get it open. And you can see that it sounds like a lot of money, but when you look at the cost of dredging, um, it's, it, it's uh, I mean, we're, we're going to probably spend six million dollars on just these two projects, Just and this is pretty typical. Um, but um, other than that, um, as far as the grant cycle is concerned, um, you know, we, you know, I think I've explained to you guys that, 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 that find our second major responsibility is to help improve the public access to the intercoastal waterway through our grant program for local governments. And um, um, based on the formula that was developed, on the amount of money available for projects in St. Johns County uh, from fine, it's about $600,000 a year. And of course, I work with the city and the county and actually even the airport authority uh, on projects that, Im that improve the public access to the waterway. And um, actually right now, the, uh, and of course the deadline for getting these grant applications is, is March 31st or April 1st of 2019. So right now, what, what I'm aware of is, in, at least working with the city, Mr. Pickett's still here, uh, the plan is to, uh, and I think you've all already approved this, is to uh, go forward with Salt Run, uh, which would be a 75% a, a fine contribution and a 25% local match. Um, and that's kind of rare. Um, m most of our grants are 50-50. Um, and um, I think with the county, it doesn't look like the county is going to be in a position to go for a grant this cycle. Yeah, we will. That's okay. You will? Yep. Okay. So with the county, I guess we're looking at Doug Crane. Yep. Okay, so Doug Crane is um, would be a 50/50. That would be fifty thousand dollars from fine. So, um, and I think the other stuff the county's looking at um, wouldn't involve the port district because it's outside your district. But anyway, the reason I'm telling you this is <clears throat> right now, looking at, at at what I what I'm aware of, if you have any projects that you'd like to go forward with. Um, there's still apparently, at least for fines, uh, grant programs, some funding available. Lord have mercy. Can I ask you a question? Um, <coughs> was was part of the grant for the um, Lincolnville kayak ramp? W were they not? Yes. Okay, so that money is still available. Uh, it, yes, uh, I mean they have to start over on that. As far as the fine grant. Um, I now have to defer to Mr. Pickett. Uh, you can get, for instance, what messed that deal up was the hurricane. Um, the, um, the the local match from this board 
was actually diverted to get the fuel dock open at the at the city marina. How well, 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 the fuel dock's been open a long time. Um, I just I just read recently that Mr. Piggott asked for the a hundred and something thousand dollars, I guess it was a 50-50, to be, just like you said, they had approved that, the find, and this board approved the money for the kayak ramp, and then Mr. Piggott for the city came back and asked them to unapprove it for that and allow them to use it towards construction for the marina building, is what I read. For the fuel docks. It was a fuel dock. Right? A fuel dock went open a long, dock. long, long time ago, so we didn't need to well, just recently this, take this that one, money. I for think this particular, that, that, uh, Rebalt, or excuse me, Lincolnville, um, kayak Liberia right. Street kayak launch goes back at least two years as far as the, the fine grants concerned. So it's it's been in the works for a while. Now, as far as the fine grant is concerned, if I think did you guys ask for an extension on that? Yeah, they've asked for, for an extension on that. So that money's still available. You're half of that grant, so we just have to reapprove. Um, I don't have. Well, yeah, somebody's got to come up with the local match, whether okay. it's from this board or the city or, you know, or, or something. As I recall, idea. though, and I may be, may be wrong, is that we, we never really approved the kayak rank, ramp. They were asking for the money, I believe. That According to the newspaper, it was approved, and, and then, thought, it, then they brought it back to the board. I'm thinking that we, I don't think we ever did it. We did approve it. Jim Piggott, City of St. Augustine. Uh, two years ago, we applied for a police boat and a kayak launch. The second phase of the kayak launch was actually a construction. Our estimation for the kayak launch was a total of $180,000, 50-50 match. You guys approved that. You approved the $60,000 and $60,000 from fine for the police boat. We had Hurricane Irma, which destroyed <coughs> our fuel docks. We want to get boats back on the waterway. Uh -huh. So we came here and said, Let's, can we use that money oh, okay. for again towards a boat, towards a fuel dock rebuild? Um, and then the last meeting came back and said, "City's going to try to find the money, the ninety thousand dollars that was originally approved from you guys to match." Yeah, I, I remember that because I, I remember saying, "Well, you know, you may not get that money for the, for the ramp because that's well, I thought that was a but the fine portion is good for another year." Yeah, so because I just thought that was a lot of money, money for a money. kayak launch. Well, yeah. While you're there, Mister Piggott, I thought it was too. What's that? I thought it was. Yeah, awful. I think it's the biggest. It's the distance getting to open water, not the not the. There's the, dredging the, involved the or ramp something. itself. No, I mean just yeah, getting yeah, getting, yeah, getting to the water. The dock. The length yeah, of the dock. I think there would probably be. I don't know. I don't know how I'd vote on whether to fund that again, but we'll just wait till that. Well, happens. Mr. Piggott, are you going to ask anytime soon to get uh, funding so you can complete that ramp? Because, uh, and you too, Mr. Blow, the people of St. Augustine and or of this district have a terrible time getting into their water. Just a terrible time. I'm it is you, it's so limited. I bet you all here all the time. So just to put it off and put it off, it, you know, maybe it is too expensive and we should look at some of these other cheaper options, but it'd be nice to get around to it for the people who would like to get in the water. So I guess the question is, are you going to be asking, are you going to bring bringing that to the board again on the kayak launch? That's why I was at the last meeting. I said the city will look for the $90,000 for the kayak launch. So you're not going to bring that to the board? We're going to, if, I'm never going to say never. We're, we're going to initially look for that $90,000 that you all approved before. We, when we graciously accepted the $60,000 for the police boat at the last meeting. So if you want to put me in a box and say, uh, I'm not going to come back and ask No, you I'm not that. trying to put you in a box. I'm just saying what I read in the newspaper was a quote from you that you were going to come back I, after the first of the year. I haven't and ask spoken to a newspaper, so I don't know where you read that. I read it every morning, and it was a quote from either you or the city. So that was what I was trying to clear up, if somebody's even going to come back and try to get the grant. Again. Right now we're going to look to find our own $90,000. Okay. That it? Um, yes, sir. I think so. Um, other than uh, and just following up on Teddy's uh, presentation, um, there's another potential uh, public access point that I've been interested in for a long time. Uh, it's a tough one, but under the uh, State Road 312 bridge on the east side <clears throat> is a lot of area. Uh, when that bridge was built, the uh, Pierre Thompson owned both sides of the of the road, 
In fact, he, I think he provided the right of way. Um, and at the time, <coughs> he um, wanted the ability to go from the north to the south and vice versa right. under the bridge. Right, I remember so that. So if you've ever been under there, you notice there's a lot of room under yep. there. So uh, in addition to that, there's not a lot of uh, uh, sea grass or uh, marsh grass under that bridge, probably because of the, when it was built, it was b disturbed. So it, to me, has a potential for a uh, public access uh, site, whether it be a boat ramp or a kayak launch or, to me, a water taxi location would be great. The challenge with that site is, is, is access to the road. And um, <clears throat> as that property has been developed over the years, um, the... Uh, I'm also on the planning and city zoning board, and <clears throat> I've tried to kind of lobby those applicants to see if they would help us, uh, per, you know, by giving us some land, perhaps, to get a road so that you could access <coughs> that area under the bridge from 312. Uh, I haven't been successful at that, but I still think that's a viable uh, location in the future uh, because it would um, certainly serve the city of San Augustine Beach. It might take some pressure off of uh, Lighthouse Park, which is a very busy A lot family. of pressure, yeah. Um, the, um, uh, but I just thought I'd throw that out as, as, since we were talking about future locations. That's uh, an excellent idea, Mr. Bill, I think. And you know what? Uh, so under the bridge is obviously public property. Yes, that's a DOT. But on the sides, there's not enough public property to... Well, the uh, way that bridge was built <laughs> is um, it, you could conceivably build a road, I think, on the north side, but you would have to um, probably construct a retaining wall on that embankment, and there's also a large drainage ditch there, so there would be some significant civil costs. What I tried to do over the years is, is, is conjole that property owner into giving us some, ex some additional right-of-way along there, but I wasn't successful. Um, Are you talking about Pierre? Not Pierre. This oh. is after he sold it to... Okay. Uh, the Hudson land, not uh, the then that, and then the apartment guy. I, I so we could get that. further away from the bridge and not have to do. Well, I think it's there's also the other piece that's in play. Of course, is on the south side. Um, that property came before the city for a uh, PUD plan unit development rezoning, and uh, it, and, it, and it failed. So the property owner still has it. Uh, and, I, and since, if you give me a few, um, not to take too much time, but um, there is a, 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 a um, effort by citizens to see if perhaps that south side of the bridge uh, can be um, purchased for a uh, um, reserve and perhaps parks, uh, you know, some public use because uh, it's a it's a significant piece of property it has a tremendous amount of, I mean Jesse Fish is buried there or was buried there or there's 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 some real uh, and it's a nice piece of property um, so maybe in the future this board might have a, a, a role in that how many uh, cars would it be as many cars as like the Volano boat landing over there I mean is that much I, more? I don't know it would be we'd, have, a big to, space? we'd have to look at it but I just thought I'd since we, I think it's the most excellent idea I've heard of. Well, a list of, of potential boat ramp areas, that's one in, that I've always been intrigued about if we could figure out a way to secure it. For, because I will tell you this, as far as utilizing the uh, area under the bridge, DOT um, uh, uh, does that up and down the coast. I mean, if you go down in Volusia County or any of the counties going south, you'll see a, a lot of... Uh, um, uh, fishing piers, kayak launches, boat ramps even, and especially in South Florida, a lot of water taxi stops under the DOT bridges. And if you go to, like, for instance, Broward County, they have a very efficient uh, water taxi service that just goes up and down the waterway, and a lot of the stops are, are under the bridges. So, anyway, And that's deep water as well. It wouldn't be it like... Looks like yeah, it looks like real good water. And, and the thing about it is what intrigues me is when you actually look at the amount of jurisdictional wetlands under there, it, it uh, doesn't look like um, it would be a total deal killer as far as getting it permitted. Uh, but but I'm, I'm just throwing that out for, it's kind of like a wish list. Uh, and, and since we talked about potential sites, 
Oh, I, I thought I'd throw that out now. And actually, <coughs> it's a little, uh, that property is, is I technically in the city limits, so perhaps the city might be involved in it. But if, if that ever gets done, it's going to take uh, an effort of all our, all our local governments working together to get that done. How do we get it started? Do we make a motion tonight to see if the commissioners well, can I, listen I, to I, it? It's probably premature to do a motion tonight. I just thought I'd thought, throw it out for you guys to think about. It's, uh, uh, but there is, there is a movement developing to uh, try to secure that property on the on the south side of 312 as in, in the public hands as far as to conserve it and perhaps do some recreational activity there. And, and if that happened, I could see where we could get uh, road access to, uh, to uh, a ramp and water taxi stop or something like that under there. Anyway, well, thank you for your time. Right. Appreciate thank it. Carl. I'm sorry, I have one more yes, question. Sir. Do you think our reserve fund, is our emergency fund, is too low? Well, we've de the, board is, the board has debated that in okay. the past. And, uh, and, and, the, and, and I don't want to speak for the board because these guys all debated it, but, but the consensus was a million dollars you would kind of keep in a lockbox. Mm -hmm. um, if the reason for that discussion is if, if, if you have a storm come through, mm -hmm. the response time for, say, to get the core to come and, 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 sure. and dredge it out is going to take a lot of time. But is a million dollars not going to be enough to take care of it? Well, nobody really risk? knows. Right. Uh, but to give you an example, uh, in an emergency uh, situation to get the channel open, you typically would use a, a, what's called a hopper dredge. There, there are very few hopper dredges in, in the private sector. The Corps operates several hopper dredges. At, they're based out of Wilmington, North Carolina. We utilize them a lot in the intercoastal waterways uh, that worked here. The, the Curry Tech was one that, that's worked here. Um, and, uh, and to give you a, a feel for one of those dredges, it costs $25,000 a day to, to operate that dredge. Um, and that's from Wilmington, and the, the, the 25 grand starts from Wilmington to here, unless you can coordinate it where they're already here. Uh, and then as far as the amount of material they can move um, per day, it's a function of where they have to take it from, where they have to put it. And the last time we had the curry tuck here, uh, they were uh, basically dredging the channel because we had a problem out there. It's a number of years ago. And, and they um, had uh, the, the, the closest place we could dispose of that material was down near the, the pier out here. And so the further the distance from where you're dredging to where you dispose of it, of course, reduces the, the, the amount of production per day, which factors into that $25,000 per day. But to, to answer your question, I, really, I, I mean, we, we, I don't think anyone can tell you whether a million dollars is enough or too much, it's, but it's a number the board over the years has sort of focused on as, as, as a reserve for uh, an emergency in the inlet. Has, has the board ever sent a dredge out on our dime? Have we ever done any dredging of the inlet? Not that I'm aware of that the board has, the, the commissioners have skillfully managed it so they've been able to get somebody else to pay for it. We could go get the humps out then if we needed to in between. Well, yeah, I mean, the last time the Curry Tuck was here, it ended up that uh, um, I, get, I think the federal government paid for it. But it's... Uh, but you never know, especially the, the big fear is a, is a hurricane event. And the, and the inlet's closed, and it's killing business, and uh, you, and you, at least you got a million dollars maybe to get get something going. You know, the thing is, in a hurricane event, I think even the private people, well, I don't even know if we'd ever be able to get that. You know, once a hurricane hits, we need our own barge. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> can we get a hopper barge? <laughs> yeah, I got to tell you, uh, we find actually kick that around and, and the cost of operating something like it just doesn't make sense. Um, and, and Is it the insurance or? It, it's, it's, well, you have to utilize it. Uh, the, the amount of time uh, that, that you would need it uh, doesn't justify the expense. In other words, it's such an expensive piece of equipment to have it sitting around. Right. Uh, That's why I would think that we would hire it out. Yeah. Well, to give you an example, the, with the core, uh, they have, you know, I don't know, 
but Savannah District, there's Jackson District, there's probably four or five districts along the east coast of the United States. Wilmington is the only district that has the hopper dredges. They operate them and then they basically do an internal billing between the other core districts. In other words, it doesn't make sense for the core to have hopper dredges in every district, so they just have them at Wilmington. And, and those dredges actually operate all up and down the, all from Maine all the way into the Gulf of Mexico. So that's the kind of scope of, of area you have to have to justify a piece of equipment like that. Thank you very much. Y'all have a nice holiday. Thank you. 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 Okay, comments by commissioners. Well, there's one follow-up is that um, I did attend the legislative <coughs> delegation session and uh, I had a printed uh, program that I gave to all the people. I gave one to Senator Hudson, to State Representative Stevenson, State Representative Paul Renner. And then uh, out of 31 people, I was the fifth on the agenda to talk, and that was a little bit different two years before I was the uh, 31st one to talk. But anyway, um, I, I presented it. I got a lot of positive response from the people who were in the audience. I haven't talked to any of the uh, uh, state representatives or Senator Hudson yet, but um, we're pursuing on. Also, I enjoyed the uh, Regatta of Lights. It was one of the best ones we've ever had, and I appreciate representing the board at the Regatta. That's it. Commissioner Way? No, it was a lot nicer than last year. That's for oh, sure. Yeah. The weather was perfect. God, yeah. No, no, no comments. Mr. Brown? No further comments. Mr. Flowers? I wouldn't. Please stop talking to me, to Mr. Flowers. The commissioner. I would like to ask about the email account and how I can access that. Um, you sent me an email that we all had port accounts and, now. And what that does is that flows to your personal. So whenever you give out your email, it, you give out the poor email that you have, but it all flows to your personal account. Like On the incoming. Call, right. Your incoming. How do I make an outgoing email with that account, Sandy at Porter yeah. Sandy? I have to, I'll talk to Mr. Reed and see what he says. All right, if you email me so that I can have access to that, so I can use it in both directions would be great. Um, that's all I have. Okay, it looks like our next meeting is going to be the 15th of January. Yes. We're done. Dr. Shaw. Have a nice Christmas. You too. Thank you. I have to let her talk. I understand, I understand, believe me. Yeah. See you later. Three. Get your little doggy. Give me a call and get that thing over. Chris, where's Chris Way? You can't leave anywhere. You have to stay right here. Okay. Your flower should be coming in here. Some of the shirts. She knows how to get through this. So really? Cool. Really? Coming up? Yeah, look at that. I'm going to use this one for me too. Oh, that's amazing. Another exciting uh, afternoon. Yeah. Uh, Fort Worth is good. Yep. Yep. So the nationwide permit is like a nationwide invitation. That's all it is.